The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, we're all good. Mm -hmm. Hi. Good evening, everyone. My name is Anna Prisco. I'm the National Director of Activism. Here with me is <coughs> sorry, Tracy Gesselman, the Northeast Program Director and Activism Program Director as well. Tonight, I really want to go over a lot of strategies for activism activism initiatives we've been doing so far and answer a lot of your guys' questions in terms of activism techniques and what really works. So I want to start with a bit of a broad question. Why should we focus on activism in the junior state? And I think that activism is really important in JSA and a lot of times takes a back seat to debate or other aspects of the organization. I think that in focusing in activism, we provide a sort of real-world medium for our ideologies in JSA and what we've actually accomplished in JSA to make a difference. I think that activism also lets the youth of a country be involved in a meaningful way, and it makes the political organizations, political systems take youth more seriously, and I think because of that, the junior state really needs to start bringing up activism more often and using activism as a force to change policy and to have a meaningful difference. So I think the first question we really need to address in terms of activism is the difference between effective activism and ineffective activism. In a lot of ways, there are activism initiatives that may sound great and sound impressive, but they don't really accomplish all that much. I'll, an example of this is maybe doing file work for a presidential, a presidential campaign. While it is a good experience and good to be working on a presidential campaign, you're not really learning that much doing file work. You're not really making a noticeable difference on the outcome of the campaign. So you're not really getting that much out of it, and the campaign is not getting that much out of it. And a lot of times these activism initiatives are pursued because of the name they support or the prestige it seems to carry, but I think in many ways the junior state would be better off focusing on activism initiatives that happen on a smaller scale and where the difference could be noticed more easily. So because of this, I think the junior state needs to be more active in their local communities. A lot of states already do this with youth advisory boards. Youth advisory boards provide a way where students can actually have a meaningful difference in their community, where their difference is noticed and it provides them an educational experience with how government runs, how local government runs. And I think that initiatives such as these need to be focused more on in the junior state. And the two questions I ask myself and I think are very useful to ask when pursuing activism initiatives are up here is does it directly benefit a group or community? Can you see like a marked change or a marked improvement on this group or community by doing the activism initiatives? Or does it provide an educational purpose? Sometimes when, when participating in a large-scale activism initiative, it might not actually have a meaningful or tangible difference, but it does provide an educational purpose to students, in which case it's also beneficial. So I think these two questions really need to be taken into mind when pursuing activism. <clears throat> so I want to go into what we've kind of done wrong with activism in the past so that we can remedy it for the future and make activism more easy and accessible for statesmen around the country. I think a lot of times what chapters are missing out on is communication with state directors. This isn't necessarily by the fault of the chapters. A lot of times state directors are not made accessible to chapters, but state directors are probably the best resources to get information about activism initiatives, to get advice about activism initiatives. And they're the best way that national activism initiatives can be pushed down through the states to chapters. In the fall activism guide, which if you guys haven't gotten, will be sent out after this webinar, there's a list of all the state directors of activism, and by that you can contact them, ask them questions about activism. They're a really great resource that you should be utilizing here. <clears throat> Another issue that I've seen in the past is impractical activism initiatives, activism initiatives that a lot of chapters can't accomplish because either they don't have the infrastructure to, don't have the members to, don't have the administrative backing to. So I think as an organization we need to focus on activist initiatives that all chapters can actually accomplish. And the third thing which I've addressed in the fall activism initiatives is a lot of times chapters don't have a great selection of activism initiatives when it comes to the national initiatives per 
pushed down through the states. And through the fall activism initiatives that we're trying to push this year, I think we can see a noticeable difference in that. So again, if you haven't gotten the fall activism guideline for this year, we'll send it out after this. The fall activism initiatives are a bit obviously election-based. We have the great opportunity to be running activism in the year of a presidential election. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that we have to focus on these national issues. We don't have to focus on the presidential debate. The name recognition of presidential candidates is extremely high. Awareness isn't exactly an issue, and because of that, it's very interesting to look at the local leaders, the local campaigns that your chapter can be involved in. Because of this, a lot of our initiatives push a focus on local issues. Some of our issues that you can do, some of our initiatives that we can do this with are mock elections, voter registration, debate watch parties, mock debates, and partnering with local campaigns. Mock elections don't necessarily need to be the presidential candidate. They can be local candidates as well, municipality or even, even candidates for the United States Congress. Voter registration, I really like to push along chapters because it is by far the easiest thing a chap the easiest way a chapter can be involved in activism initiatives. It doesn't involve a great deal of infrastructure. It, in many cases, it doesn't even require administrative approval from your school. And because of that, I really want to try pushing voter registration to chapters. I know that you have to be wary of the voter registration deadlines in your state. For some states, they're very close or expired. But if your state can still conduct voter registration drives, I highly suggest that chapters look into it. Because essentially for voter registration, all you really need is to print out the voter registration forms. There are national voter registration forms or voter registration forms by state. Some states even let you do it online depending on the state regulations. In the fall activism guide, there is a guide to which states let you do that, Links, helpful links to show you where you can register online, where you have to have a form, and the deadlines for each state. And I think to sum that up, voter registration is something that all chapters should be engaging in because it doesn't require that many people. It doesn't require that great a deal of time commitment, but it does make a huge difference as registering people to vote is an integral part of the political process. So another big, another big initiative that chapters can do, which is more for large-scale chapters that have a greater built-up infrastructure, is partnering with local campaigns. By creating a conversation between your chapter and local campaigns and sending students to volunteer with those campaigns, students can be greatly educated about the benefits of local government, of your municipality, and many times these are ignored because we like to focus on the more on the presidential election, on big name politics, but we don't realize the really valuable education that can occur by looking to your <clears throat> to your municipality, to your board of ed, to your county board, or groups such as that. So because we are getting closer to the election, we are operating in a smaller time frame right now. We still have plenty of time to hold these initiatives, but for initiatives such as partnering with local campaigns, these might be a lot more difficult because of the smaller time frame. I think for this time frame, we can really look to mock debates and mock elections for initiatives that are easy to hold and don't operate on a deadline like voter registration does. If your state allows you to register voters until the day of the election, I think that would be a great initiative to hold throughout this month and throughout the beginning of November, but a lot of states don't do that and require something like three weeks beforehand. However, in any case, mock debates and mock elections can be held up to the day of the election itself. These can operate in two ways. You can do the presidential mock debates or mock elections and the local. There are benefits and cons to each. For presidential debates, it's, it draws more people, obviously. People are more interested in it. People know more about it. So you have an audience that is already engaged and an audience that already knows the basic issues of these campaigns. For local elections, I think we should I think chapters should really look at these as a unique opportunity to educate students about local politics. I think as a statesman, it is really the obligation of the organization to teach students about politics that isn't buzzword politics, that doesn't occur at a national level. Because these politics are really important and many times politicians start at these levels and build up, and we can't ignore the importance of local politics. <clears throat> In terms of setting up for these events, obviously, 
if you want to hold them at your school, administrative approval is required, which I'm going to talk about later, trying to cooperate with your administration. And for these events, you pretty much hold them at your school if you want to involve your school community. It's also a great way to bring people into JSA who haven't been involved in the past. From in the past, for mock debates, you can either get students to debate or even get teachers to debate, which I know brings in a lot of new students and acts as an expansion initiative as well as activism. Okay, so that was basically a summary of all our fall activism plans. These end basically with the election as they're all elected. In the spring, we're going to be sending out a new program called Civics Now. Something that I know has been done on a very small scale with individual chapters in the past, but creating. I think your I think your reception's a little funky. You keep coming in and out. So, so really hope to spread it a lot more. Civics Now is essentially chapters partnering up with their local middle school. Um, let me try working with a mic for a second. Is that better? Yes. Oh, wait. Okay, great. Okay. So, okay. If you hold on a minute, I can go somewhere where the Wi Fi might be stronger. Is this okay now? Yes. Okay, great. All right, sorry for that. So essentially what we want to do with Civics Now is fill this hole that exists in middle school education currently. A lot of times students come into high school not knowing a lot about politics and therefore not being interested in it because it's not something that they had been exposed to in the past. With Civics Now, we want to go into these middle schools and teach classes on civics and government in an engaging and simulation-based environment where students would actually be prompted to learn. The role of National JSA and JSA on the state level here would be to work to create lesson plans that chapters could use if they wanted to to teach lessons. It seems like a more difficult initiative because it does require a lot of planning, but we want to work with national cabinet, with state cabinets, and with chapters themselves to create these lesson plans so chapters have a sort of guideline for what to do with this initiative. And a lot more information on this initiative will be coming out after the fall initiatives end. Okay, so this portion is going to be more how to run successful activism initiatives at your school. A big issue I see a lot of chapters running into is chapter involvement or involvement within one school. Not a lot of people in a traditional high school are that interested in politics or in JSA. And if they are, they're very hard to reach many, of time, many times. Because of this, I really like to stress the importance of making a connection on the individual level, actually reaching out to individual students, talking to them about JSA, promoting activism initiatives, because I really do to promote JSA. I know that a lot of times we like to go to Facebook, we like to go to mass email as a means to communicate, but this isn't that effective many times because the engagement level on that is so low. People get so many emails, people see so many Facebook posts that they aren't particularly engaged in your individual one. My chapter has actually started to adopt a strategy of walking through the hallways and just going up to random people and telling them about JSA, telling them about the activism initiatives we're running, and we've seen a substantial increase in participation and engagement in our chapter. I know it seems a little awkward and difficult to do, 
but it really does create chapter members who are committed and feel like they matter in your organization. Following on that line, it's good to involve as many chapter members as you can in planning events. Like even if you have a chapter board, create committees to plan activism events. Make sure that all of your chapter members feel like they're making a difference within your chapter. This makes them more committed. This makes them more likely to tell their friends about JSA, to engage more people in activism initiatives. So it's really important not to underestimate the power that inviting other people in planning your JSA events can have. Another issue here along the same lines is increasing community involvement. A lot of times JSA chapters don't hold activism initiatives in school. Examples of this are like voter registration, working with local campaigns, or even having a campaign forum for local campaigns. And a lot of times, I agree, social media is a great tool, but so are methods of communication. Having a stand at your local library or supermarket, word of mouth, just telling people about these events. And I think along the lines of getting more people to join, making sure activism initiatives are convenient and quick for people to do. Because while people might be excited about this, they might think that this is a great idea, people are, they run on a very tight timeline and making sure that activism initiatives are accessible by all is very important. So back to what I was talking about before with administration. I understand administration can be a huge problem for JSA chapters. I know chapters in my state have faced it, chapters have prohibited, or administrations have prohibited chapters from holding activism initiatives or really doing anything at the club. I think the first thing to do in the situation is to go to administration yourself and explain to them what JSA is, what you're going to do. I think a lot of times when I went to my school's administration, they voiced their problems with JSA to me, which was that students would use JSA as a forum to critique the school itself. I know this seems a little esoteric and a little out there, but in, a lot of administrations have the same fear that giving students this voice can be turned against the school. I think important in this case is to stress that JSA is a forum for opinion about politics and domestic and foreign issues and not the school itself. If you're still running into problems, a lot of these activism initiatives can be done outside of the school, debate watch parties, voter registration, working with local campaigns, and the administration of a school is not inherently necessary for these. All right, so now I want to introduce Lucia Zhang from the PNW. Lucia has been working to plan phone banking events in the Democratic Party of Oregon. They're really fantastic and really unite a lot of students in activism initiatives. Hi, can everyone hear me? Yep. Hello. Okay. Perfect. Um, so my name is Lucia, and um, I'm the director of activism for the Pacific Northwest. So the photos you see here, oh, by the way, sorry, excuse the background noise. I'm sitting in a Starbucks for anyone who's wondering. Um, but basically, the photos here um, are um, photos from an activism event that the um, Oregon um, region does in the Pacific Northwest and basically every Sunday we have this exchange with the Democratic Party of Oregon office called High School Sundays where different uh, students from the Oregon chapters go in and help with phone banking um, for different candidates and I know Anna was talking a lot about focusing on local elections along with the presidential election um, so we've made it a goal not only to phone bank for the likes of Hillary but also to phone bank for um, more um, like smaller our local candidates, like our local senators and representatives, um, the Secretary of State race, the Governor race, the Attorney General race, um, etc. Um, so yeah, that's what we've been doing on the ground there. Um, as far as how to get involved um, in local campaigns, I would say um, cold calling can actually be quite a successful tactic in my experience. Um, I tend to just reach out to whoever the volunteer coordinators are and I've been able to successfully set up events in the Pacific Northwest various like local pieces of legislation for the November ballot, like Yes on 97, Yes on 98, um, the Democratic Party, um, and overall they've been very welcoming um, if there are students who want to come in to help. Um, so I would say just go out on a limb and cold calling can definitely work. Um, I think another thing is, as Anna was talking about earlier, that it may be kind of difficult to send out mass Facebook messages or emails um, just because um, 
<clears throat> it's very hard to get on an individual level with students like that. Um, and so what I've tried to do is establish sort of a more personal um, connection with each of the chapter presidents in the um, various regions. Um, and I talk to them like person to person over call or over text. And I found that that's like a better way to encourage uh, turnout of some type um, particularly for local events where um, it may be focused on um, a handful of chapters. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, we've also tried to do um, monthly activism events where we, prom we choose one activism event in each region to promote through um, the mayor's CIA and um, the publicity department where we have it um, publicized on a calendar on the website and we have them go out on CIA calls and I think that can be really useful because CIA agents tend to have more of an in with different schools and so they're able to talk to them directly and um, like garner a little bit more interest in activism activities than maybe the activism department would be able to. Um, so that's something that I think is very cool. Um, I know like this Thursday in our region we're going to um, a debate for the um, governor candidate Kate Brown in Oregon. Um, so things like that. Um, I think like activism um, as Anna was saying before can be one of two things. Um, either it can be something that's truly impactful or influential so say like phone banking or canvassing um, may actually be able to help with some of these close races but it can also just be something that's educational for um, students to learn about the civic process. Something like a debate with your local candidates is very cool or if you could invite them to speak at your school those sorts of things are all um, I, I think beneficial activism events that garner a lot of interest from students, um, especially if you can get, you know, some sort of a figure, some sort of a candidate, and a lot of them are like perfectly happy to come over to your school and talk about that sort of thing. They love when students are involved. So that's like my two cents. I like it. Thank you so much. That was really impressive to see all the events you've been doing in the PNW, everything you've been you've been able to coordinate in terms of activism. But what was really important that you mentioned and what I forgot to bring up was the importance of CIA in JSA and coordinating activism. If you're a chapter president, <laughs> if you're a chapter president, you should definitely be reaching out to your CIA, asking them about national activism initiatives, asking them how you plan activism initiatives. They're really the closest resources you have to the larger the larger state and the larger organization. So I think that's basically all I wanted to mention. Lucy, is there anything else you want to bring up? Um, I mean, I don't know if you, anyone has any questions about voter registration, um, but I think like that's also something, as you were mentioning, that is very successful and very easy to do and something that personally I've pushed really heavily in my region just because even for starting chapters, I think it's definitely a way to garner interest. Um, in, Unlike something like fight apathy where administration feels that they need to have more trust with the club and like an established um, legacy with JSA um, because kids might write something against you know the school or whatever, um, voter registration is a lot more innocuous simply because I mean you're asking kids to fill out a form and I think that that's an event that like people see a lot of like success with um, on the get-go, um, particularly in schools that haven't done it before with a lot of juniors and seniors who aren't registered. So I think that's like always something that's very like good to do and because it's a bipartisan effort um, It's also a little bit more inclusive than maybe a phone banking event would be so that's what I have to say on that mm -hmm. Absolutely, so I think just the last thing I want to say is really At the chapter level is really the most important level of JSA It's the level that actually goes out and does activism, activism initiatives We can connect directly with states and states one on promoting these initiatives. I think it's really important. All of us are accessible and ask for help. All your state directors, I'm accessible, your CIAs. And I think they're a really untapped resource that chapters can use. And I think with that, I'm going to open it up to questions. Uh, Tracy, how does it work with questions again? So you can either put your, like there's, if you all look at um, under attendees, um, there's like, Oh, there's a question tab that you can just type it in there, um, and then we can shout it out. Um, or there's like a little hand that you should be able to touch. Like it's like this little, do you see what I'm talking about, Anna? It's like, 
by attendees. It has oh, um, it's like a little hand, but let's see if anyone's put one up. Yep, here we go. All right, I'm unmuting you. Go for it, Saloni. No, just kidding. <laughs> I am muted, but. Okay, I see, I see Saloni's hand and I tried to unmute him. Let's see. Sloan, are you there? No. Did anyone type in? Can you try and type in the question? There's there's also a tab further down. You can type in a question and we can, if for some reason that's not working. People see where the I'm sure people. Oh, um, oh, he was just testing. The <laughs> oh. okay, he has no question. <laughs> okay. All right. If there are any questions anyone has, feel free to ask. I know activism and issue of coordination can be difficult, especially when you're dealing with problems with chapter infrastructure. So we're really here to answer all of your questions. Anything you might be wondering about activism initiatives, whether it's advice or technical details about the initiatives. Does anyone have examples of, um, of activism that they've done so far this year that they're really proud and excited about that they want to share? Okay, here we go. Angel. Angel, did you have something? Oh, your your microphone's muted, Angel. Angel. Uh, I see it. I saw, here we go. Nope. If for some reason I can't touch you, uh, you put your hand up and I can't, and you're muted, I can't do it. But if you guys go down to questions, you can type in the question there and I can see it. All right, I guess I guess we're not getting that to work. Anyone, anything? All right, Anna, I guess you can wrap it up. All right, so I'd like to thank everyone for coming on this call. I'd like to thank Tracy so much for being an amazing resource, for being an amazing activism program director, and Lucia for coming to speak about all the wonderful things that PNW is doing in terms of activism. We'll be sending out a link to this webinar as well as the slideshow and the full activism guide so you all have the resources for, to complete activism initiatives. Feel free to contact me if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm happy to help. And I hope you all have a great night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Anna.